thought Coach Savage did a really good job of, of coaching the team. And, um, you know, I always, I have, I've, I've always had a great relationship with the officials. Um, I got respect for them and the job they have to do, but I'm going to fight for my players. And um, I got a passion for them and our university and our team. And that's not going to change today. And it's not going to change tomorrow. And so um, with that, I'll open it up to questions. Coach, do you think what you said warranted you being tossed? Yeah, John, I appreciate the question, but that's between me and the ACC. Uh, I'm not going to publicly comment on that um, and just leave it at that. Steve, was the issue coming from, I don't know, rough play inside? I know it kind of came after a layup where Davian went to the ground. Um, I, it will prompted the conversation. Well, you know, I just, there was a play at the other end with Davian. I thought, you know, he got fouled and, and obviously they didn't call it. And, and, you know, it led to the situation. And again, what was said between me and the referees is between me and them and the ACC. After that happens, or, you know, are you upset with yourself? You mad with yourself? You know, um, how do you process that part? I'm more, I'm more upset with just, you know, that's my team, right? I don't want to ever turn my, I don't ever want to leave them out there without me. But again, I'm, I'm always going to fight for our, my team and my players and, and Wake Forest University. And so, um, yeah, there's, you know, you're kind of conflicted a little bit, but um, most part, I just wanted to be there to coach the game and, and coach the team and, you know, and, and no disrespect to Duke either. I didn't want that to be the, the narrative of the game. I mean, I thought they played great. Steve, was there frustration that boiled over with also how, how the game was going at that point? I mean, I think there's all kinds of emotions that go on in a game. You know, you're trying to, get your team going. You know, we were kind of hanging around. We weren't playing great, but we had started to get to the basket. Um, I think Davian got a couple, three or two layups back to back after I called timeout because we weren't being very patient on offense. And that's one of the things about motion, Connor, is you got to stay with it. You got to continue to stay with it. And sometimes you got to score late in the clock after they break down. It's not going to happen off one or two passes. And so, yeah, I was a little frustrated. I was frustrated with, little bit with the pace on offense and the way we were defending you know I, I didn't I just didn't feel us out there defensively at all and if I don't feel them I know Duke doesn't feel them and they got good players and hey listen everybody's beating up on Duke you know they're not, Duke's playing they're, they're, they're they got a good team man and they're starting to play well and and they're gonna probably continue to play well and and so um you know I I think they have a nice team and, and I like the way they run offense and and we just couldn't guard them did you ever get Coach, thrown out at East Tennessee State? Once. Coach, um, defensively, do you, what, what upset you the most about the way things are going? Was it, Did you think Duke was playing that well offensively? Do you think guys were making mental errors, or was it just more uh, execution? I, just, I, I think it, we, we just settled a little bit. Um, you know, when you run, like when we cut, when we run a motion against Florida State, we got deep in the clock. We made them make a mistake. We found the open guy. And we made the shot. Okay, I thought early on we weren't patient enough and going deep enough into the clock, and then not finding the right guy. I thought one time I'll give an example. I thought we we cut, we moved it, we moved it, we got uh, we got a cut, we got a drive by Isaiah Mucius, and he has uh, Davian wide open on his on the left wing, and he and he tries to throw a pass to somebody else that's not open. I'm just using that as an example. It's not just Zay. You know, I thought that we just weren't finding the open guy. I, th I thought Odie, you know, cut was cutting a lot, but then not running, then just running out to the three-point line and not posting. Early in the game, we got it to him a couple times and he scored, but then he quit doing that. And when you run motion, that doesn't mean you don't post up. And I've, we've talked about that over and over and over, especially when you're cutting, a lot of times the guy's behind you. And so he's got the advantage to post and he wasn't doing that. And, you know, um, you know, and then some turnovers. There's just a lot of things that weren't going well, you know, in the first half. But, you know, offensively, I thought that we were allowing their physicality to uh, affect the way we cut and the way we screened. Steve, you were so encouraged by the way the offense was run at Florida State. What did you – did that have more to do with Duke being physical? Because it kind of feels like Florida State was, was physical too. Yeah, but Florida State did a lot of switching. And so we could slip and get between them. Tonight, uh, I thought that uh, Duke did a good job. They were very physical. 
and they were physical on our cuts. Uh, we weren't getting those slips, and they were physical on our screens, kind of knocking us off the spot or being physical at the point of attack, which a good defensive team does. And so, you know, I thought that affected – I thought that had a little too much effect on us. Instead of playing through the contact, playing through the physicality of it, I thought we allowed us to just – uh, slow down, not be quick on our cuts, not be sharp, not come strong back to the ball, um, and just playing offense a little too far out on the court, getting pushed off our spots, um, you know, driving it, and then um, not finishing for the, a lot of times. And so, um, you know, we still got some good stuff, but, you know, not enough to, to affect the game to keep it close. Steve, do you get to talk to the team at halftime? Yes. Okay. Uh, what, I guess what do you try to do in that in that situation when you know you're not going back out there with them? I mean, I think it's the same as it is every game. You know, we we meet till the 10 minute mark. Um, we write down uh, adjustments on offense and defense. Uh, then I go in there and address the team on what uh, what our offensive adjustments are and what our defensive adjustments are, and we go back out on the court. I mean, it was business as usual. Anything else, guys? Thanks, Coach. Thanks.
All right, guys, questions for Isaiah. So yeah, I guess first off, just as a team, how do you try to respond to Coach Forbes getting teed up and, and sent to the locker room and try to just keep going forward? Um, like he fights for us. Like that just shows like the passion and how much like he loves us and is gonna do anything for us. So um how we respond is by playing for him, like play as hard as you possibly can for him and play for each other. Um, because you can tell this compassion and heart like He's not going to let anything go bad about our team. and He's going to fight for us no matter what. So if something's going wrong, he feels like the refs aren't making good calls, he's going to talk about it because he loves us and has that much fight for us and wants us to win. So we got to come back and respond with that same energy that he brought for us. When that happens, like I know it's it's the same plays and everything like that, but um, I don't know, does it get does it get a little discombobulating when you know, he's not on the sideline and, and maybe you're listening to – to the assistants and, and listening for things in different ways than the normal. No, I mean, the assistant, like Coach Savage did an amazing job stepping in and, and, and filling that role for Coach Forbes. I mean, all their voices are powerful. We, we listen to them the same way as we listen to Coach Forbes because, you know, they, they tell us things, you know, throughout practices that, you know, we listen to and we apply to the game. So it wasn't really a different change. Obviously, Coach Forbes is the head coach, but in terms of, what they were saying and the game plan, it didn't change. And they, they, they did as best they could as assistant coaches and executing. And I think they did a great job. You know, we didn't come up with the win, but I think they did a really good job of filling in that role for him. And I think Coach Forbes would be proud of them as well. Isaiah, were you surprised to, to see Coach get thrown out like that? It happened so fast. I mean, he's, he was compassionate. I mean, it was a couple suspect calls. And I think, you know, he voiced his opinion and felt that, you know, it wasn't going the way that we should have. And, you know, I love Coach Forbes and he loves us. And that's what he's going to show his compassion. And he knew that, yo, I'm going to fight for you guys. And if it, if I got to fight to that extent, I will. So, you know, he fights for us. And I think we got to keep fighting for him as well. Up to that point, uh, game wasn't going, I'm sure, the way that you guys wanted it to be going. What was tough about the way Duke came out and played tonight? Um, they they came out aggressive. I mean, I think defensively we could have did a better job of pressuring them a little bit and making them feel us. Um, I think, you know, we need to, you know, pressure the ball a little bit more. Matthew Hurt had a good game again, and I think we needed to, you know, do a better job scouting him and making sure that we made it tough for him. You know, he's, he's a really good player. I mean, the shot is hard to block, and I think we have to next time, you know, make sure that we take away those shots and make it really, really tough for him. So, I mean, going into NC State, we just got to, you know, flip, flip, uh, flip the flip the page and then, you know, continue to get better and go into NC State, you know, with a clear mind and try to come out with a win. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have bad plays, but how can you respond in a matter of seconds to make a better play on the defensive end or offensive end? So be short-minded, you know, and come into the next practice tomorrow. Practice as hard as we can for these two days preparing for Saturday and come out on Saturday and get a win. Pardon me if you've already been asked this today, but Coach says he's someone who's going to be fighting for his players. Um, so what did it mean to you when you see a guy as fiery as he was getting a double tech in the first half? Um, it's tough because you see your coach, you know, leaving the leaving the court. But at the same time, you you respect it because you see, it shows how much love and, and compassion he has, not only for the game of basketball, but also for his team. Like, he's going to do whatever he can to make sure that we're not, you know, nothing bad is going to happen to us. So he came out there and, and, you know, he did what he did. And I think, you know, Coach Forbes is going to be – is a great coach and he continues to coach really hard. So, I mean, it was tough to see him come off – go off the court. But we knew that he was he was going out there and he was going out swinging. So we just got to keep fighting for him. Thanks, Zay. Of course. Guys, that'll be it for uh, tonight. If you guys have any questions, um, reach out to Will or Lucy, and they will uh, be there to answer any of those. Thanks, guys.